ensure that people in the Philippines can live in peace, dignity, and free from abuse by any people or institutions, including the state, the Philippine Constitution protects human rights in the country. Specifically, here we will expound Section 14, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, attorney. Sit down. Let's recap on our previous discussion. Last time? Saan ba tayo last time? It's on uh, section 13, right? Right? Yes, yes, yes attorney. Okay. Let me call on... Ms. Kabirao. Yes, Attorney. Ms. Kabirao. Section 13 discuss about the right to bail and uh, the writ of habeas corpus, right? Yes, Attorney. What is the writ of habeas corpus? Um... The writ of habeas corpus attorney, it literally means um, to produce the body. It is to demand the public official to deliver the detained person into the to the court, so that he can he can state or say its valid reason for its detention. Okay, attorney. thank you, Mr. Merrow. Thank you. Right now, let's discuss the next section. Article, rather, Section 14. Let me call on... Oh, Miss Tali. OMG. Yes, attorney. What is or recite Section 14? Um, Section 14, no person... Ah, Section 14, no person shall be held to answer for a criminal offense without due process of law. Paragraph 2, in all criminal prosecutions, in all criminal prosecutions, wait lang, in all criminal prosecutions, Yes, go on, Ms. Talib. No person is, no person it's in our chant class. What is it our chant says? I will memorize everything on it. Be ready always during class, Miss Talib. I'm sorry, Attorney. Go back to your seat. Remain standing. Okay, Miss Gremio. Recite to us. Recite to the class. Section 14. Section 14, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution provides that one, no person shall be held to answer criminal offense without due process of law. And second, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved and shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and counsel to be informed of the nature and uh, cause of accusations against him and to have a compulsory process to secure the attendance of the witnesses and the production of evidence in his behalf. However, uh, after the arraignment, the trial may proceed notwithstanding the assets of the accused, provided that he has been duly notified and his failure to appear is unjustified. Okay, that's very good, Miss Gremio. Miss Juan, People versus Marites. People versus Marites, attorney. People versus Marites. The facts of this case is the, the petitioner filed for the petition of the writ of mandamus a writ of mandamus for the publication of in the official gazette. Oh my God, Miss Juan, we are talking about 
section 14. You're awakening the monster, Miss Juan. I'm trying to recall the case, attorney. Um, people versus Marites. I'm sorry, attorney. I think I forgot the case. I, I think I haven't read that case. Okay. Sit down, Miss Juan. Sorry. Thank you. Let's go go back to Miss Gremio. Miss Gremio, give justice to this class. Listen to Miss uh, Gremio, class. Um, Especially you, Miss Talib. Case people versus Marites. What happened here, attorney, was that the petitioner Marites was accused of violation of Section Five. 11 and 12 of the Republic Act number 9165, or commonly known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Act of 2002. Um, the fact here, the petitioner, from the moment she was arrested to uh, all throughout the proceeding, what happened was. me with counsel. We are not guilty yet, Marie. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can still win. Right? Yes, we can. Always remember that even if you are accused, your rights are never impaired. You are innocent until the contrary is proven. No person shall be convicted unless the prosecution has proved that you are guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Don't worry, there's this uh, equipose rule where the evidence in a criminal case is evenly balanced and the constitutional presumption of innocence tilts the scales uh, in favor of the accused. Another thing is that you have the right to be presented and defended in person by a counsel at every stage of the proceedings, from arraignment to the promulgation of judgment. Arraignment means our first court appearance in front of a judge and the prosecutor. So the right to counsel is a due process, meaning that a person must be heard before being condemned. However, one need not be an accused to avail of the right to counsel. Every person under the custody of the law enjoys this right. Oh yes, presume innocent until proven guilty and right to counsel. Oh, abrilan tayo. That's what I remember. How about you? Yeah, my lawyer also said that. Um, if I remember it correctly, um, Republic Act seventy four thirty eight, which states that um, every person detained, arrested, or under custodial investigation shall at all times um shall at all times be assisted yeah. by a counsel. Yeah, my attorney also added that we should have we should be informed uh, regarding to our rights that we have the right to be counseled or be assisted by our counsel or any lawyers. Yeah. If you desire to procure the services of counsel, the court will grant you reasonable time to do so. And if you desire to have counsel but are unable to employ one, the court will assign a counsel to official to defend you. When an accused, unaided by counsel, qualifiedly admits his guilt based on ambiguous or vague information from which a serious crime can be deduced, 
it is not prudent for the trial court to render a serious judgment finding the accused guilty of a capital offense without absolutely any evidence to determine or clarify the true facts of a case. Yeah, it is really their duty to inform us. Another thing is we can testify on our behalf. However, if you don't want to testify for yourself, they will not hold it against us. Our silence shall not in any way to prejudice us, even to compel us to be a witness against ourselves, against yourself, against ourselves. So that's all right, Mari, Tess. Oh wow, you know everything about our rights. Of course. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The, my lawyer is really brilliant. She really cares about us, Mare. Even though she knows that we are accused, she really gave her sympathy to, towards us. At eto pa, we have the right to remain silent. The court cannot compel us to be witnesses against ourselves. You can also refuse to answer questions or make potentially incriminating statements or even testify against criminal cases. We also have this thing called uh, um, right of confrontation that is available during trial, which begins only upon arraignment. When a party has the opportunity to cross-examine an opposing witness but failed to do so, he necessarily forfeits the right to cross-examine and the testimony provided um, on direct examination of the witness will be received or allowed to remain in the record. To have compulsory process issued to secure the attendance of witnesses and the prosecution of evidence on his behalf. This compulsory process is to compel a person to appear as a material witness before the court to ensure that the witness will attend the proceedings and will produce evidence on your behalf. Thank you, Maris. Okay, so let me summarize everything. My rights are never impaired even when I am accused. I am innocent until proven guilty. I have the right to be presented and defended in person and by counsel at every stage of the proceedings, from arraignment to promulgation of the judgment. I should be informed that I have the right to have my own counsel before being arraigned and to ask whether I desire the aid of a counsel, and if I desire to have counsel but I'm unable to employ one, the court will assign a counsel the official to defend me. It is my right to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against me. I can also testify as a witness on my own behalf. However, if I don't have, if like I don't want to testify for myself, they will not. Hold it against me. My silence should not in any manner prejudice me, even to compel me to be a witness against myself. I have the right to remain silent unless I choose to take the witness stand. They cannot compel me to be a witness against myself. I can refuse to answer questions, refuse to make potentially incriminating statements, or refuse to testify at a trial in any criminal case. I have the opportunity to cross-examine an opposing witness, but if I fail to avail myself of it, he necessarily forfeits the right to cross-examine, and the testimony provided on direct examination of the witness will be received or allowed to remain in the record. And lastly, to have compulsory process issued to secure the attendance of the witnesses and production of evidence on my behalf. That's right, Mari. Mari. That's right, Mari. Thank you so much, Mama Mari. <laughs> Very good, Miss Gamio. The accused also have the right to a speedy, impartial, and public trial class. Remember that. And to appeal in all cases allowed in the manner prescribed by law. Okay? All persons shall have the right to a speedy disposition of their cases before all judicial, quasi-judicial, and administrative bodies. This constitutional right is not limited 
to the accused in a criminal proceedings, but extend to all parties in all cases, be it civil or administrative in nature, as well as all proceedings, whether judicial or quasi-judicial. As for the right to appeal, it is not, remember, it is not a constitutional, natural, or inherent right. Hindi siya natural right. It is a statutory privilege of a statutory origin and therefore available only if granted. Only if granted as provided by the statutes. It may be exercised only in the manner prescribed by law or by the, prescribed by the provisions of the law. With that, uh, read and memorize section 15 to 22. We will discuss that next meeting. Last is this.